She also said that she, on July 15th, had received a uh, phone call and talked to Kaylee. I actually received a phone call today, now from a number that is no longer in service. I did get to speak to my daughter for about a moment, about a minute. Cell phone records say no incoming calls at all on that day. There was five phone calls, incoming phone calls. Well, don't you have the records, Miss Anthony? I have them. I see well, them. Well, then why don't you release them? Why don't you release them? Show that police are wrong in this sworn affidavit that say those calls didn't come in. Mom Casey Anthony is set to walk out of the jail within hours. An anonymous benefactor putting up the $500,000 bond for her to walk free. You know, Bethany Marshall, if she cooperates any more than she did last time, will be still at square one. Well, I, I have a hard time knowing what would even motivate her to cooperate at this point because the type of pathological lying she engages in, it tends to have a life of its own over time. You've seen convicted felons, they sit on death row for 20 years. Even despite the fact that they've been convicted, they continue to lie. This is the kind of pathological liar she is. Nothing is going to change at this point. Back to Dr. Lawrence Koblinski, renowned forensic scientist, joining us out of New York. Kobe, I, I'm shocked that you think it's so difficult to get chloroform online. I mean, bottom line, our producer was getting it for about 63 bucks. It took her 10 minutes. Well, it's it's not the price. Uh, the companies that supply uh, this reagent Have you heard, heard of that Internet thing? Yes, you know, of course. Tick, 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 tick. Yeah, I, I think the companies require that the purchaser demonstrate proof that they're uh, either a, an educational institution or a functioning laboratory. Uh, this Kobe, is, yeah. all you do is put in, you type a, an, an X in a block and say, yes, I'm 18, yes, I'm an institution. Boom, you get your chloroform. Well, it, it's it's a carcinogen. It shouldn't be available to the public. Shoulda, woulda, coulda. Don't care. It's in her car trunk. Well, if it's there, and we... what is this you were telling me last night about how it can be a byproduct of a, uh, for instance, pool cleaner? Well, I think you asked me what are the possible mechanisms because for, you for... said it was possible. Well, I, I, it, one of the original syntheses involved bleach and uh, ethanol or acetone, things of that sort. So you can get traces of chloroform. Now, I'm not saying that's the likelihood here. If they really got significant amounts, uh, that would change the story a bit. A bit. A bit, You're Darn yes. right, a bit. Explain that, Mike Brooks. <laughs> you know, Nancy, uh, Dr. Kobolinski, he's the, he's the expert in this, but you know, just uh, you know, chloroform, just like my chemist buddy well, said. I mean, chloroform is uh, most often depicted in movies and in books. Yeah, right. It's, where you know, someone sneaks up with a right. chloroform rag, puts it over you, and you pass out just like that. Right. That's what chloroform is. You know, and that, and that goes to the theory now, Nancy. You know, there's another speculation. You can actually die from chloroform inhalation. That's exactly right. And now that goes to the theory now that some people are putting out there, speculative theory at best, that maybe she used that to try to put the baby to sleep so she could go out and party and then she, she possibly overdosed the baby. That's one theory out there now. There are so many theories about what there happened. Are. To Linda in Michigan. Hi, Linda. Hey, Nancy. How are you? I'm good, dear. What's your question? I have two comments. Okay. First of all, I cannot, I simply cannot understand why Casey's parents cannot convince Casey to explain her behavior regarding Kaylee. As a parent myself, I, I'm sure I would try all avenues uh, for my daughter to tell the truth, at least tell the truth to, to her mother or father. Secondly, has there been a request for a polygraph uh, to be administered to Casey? You know, I want to go back out to Natisha Lance, our producer, standing by the Orange County Jail. Have they asked Casey Anthony to take a polygraph, or has she offered to take a polygraph? No offer to take a polygraph at this time, Nancy. Her attorney, Jose Baez, said there's no need for a polygraph because she's not lying about anything and she's been upfront and honest. Well, one thing about a polygraph, if she passed it, it would help rule her out and police could then go on and look more intensely at other possibilities. By not taking a polygraph, it is actually hindering the investigation to Jane in Florida. Hi, Jane. Hey, Nancy. 
Um, this case is very dear to my heart. I have a three-year-old, and I don't live far from Orlando. But my question was, um, I had a question for the psychoanalyst. Yes. What does she think about Casey saying on her phone calls in the jail that she thought that Kaylee was close by? Does that mean with her being a pathological liar that she could have twisted the truth and she could literally be close to home? Bethany? Well, I think that's very insightful because the way Casey lies is she picks up on bits and pieces of the truth and she weaves them into the lie. So when she says they're close to ho she's close to home, is she saying she killed her and she's close to home or she passed her off and she's close to home? You know, you kind of have to weave that into the understanding of what she really meant. And very quickly, Eleanor, have you ever tried to interview somebody like Casey Anthony that just talks in circles no matter what you ask them? Oh yes, I've seen that many a time and it's sometimes very difficult to get to that small kernel of truth that's in there.